So, the question of today is, how do I prepare for a technical interview? And I kind of feel like I have to chunk this up because I find myself, you know, <laughs> uh, redoing this a couple of times. But the question came from uh, Erica. Uh, we run uh, Techies for Good together. Uh, Techies for Good is a group in Baltimore that helps nonprofits with their technical needs. Uh, we help them uh, with things uh, they want to you know, have problems with their email or they have problems with their website, they need to change their themes and WordPress. Um, we help them pretty much with everything. And so uh, this question came from the forum or the Facebook group that's uh, for that group. Uh, so um, I have been, I work for a very large company. I work for AOL. I've been there for a decade now. I know that's super, super weird to hear somebody nowadays that work <laughs> for a whole decade. Uh, I have been on both sides of the uh, table when it comes to interviewing. I have been the interviewer and the interviewer, interviewee, if I can say that right. Um, so, uh, like, I do have a lot of experience, so I think I'm kind of qualified to uh, answer this because I do a lot of technical interviews. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, before you go into an interview, you really need to be mindful of, of a couple things. The first thing uh, is that um, you really need to understand is that... Uh, a lot of companies now, or a lot of, yeah, companies, they want to hire uh, a team member, somebody that's going to fit well with the team. Uh, so a lot of times uh, you do have to show those soft skills. Uh, but we're, we're going to just kind of focus on the, the technical uh, perspective. Um, the one thing is that um, not everybody interviews the same. I've been in very, very technical interviews where we're talking about like message level protocols. You know, we're talking about like how TCP IP works or how HTTP works. Uh, and it's because of interviews for very senior positions. Um, so just kind of be mindful that uh, sometimes you're gonna like get uh, a written test or you're gonna get like somebody wants you to like write some code right there and they wanna see it. Um, also people want you to draw uh, different types of uh, diagrams. So with that being said, I think I kind of set the table to kind of get you to understand kind of the broad strokes of, of what to expect. Now, for technical interviews, um, I would say the one thing you want to do is, uh, you know, be ready to speak to a solution. Somebody's going to say, hey, you know, how would you solve this problem? You need to be able to communicate that through pictures or through component, component diagrams, you know, sequence diagrams, whatever. You need to be able to draw some way to say like, hey, I, I feel it's going to be this way and you're going to have to go up to a whiteboard. Um, the best way to prepare for this is to practice. Find somebody that's senior that will uh, kind of be like, uh, like what's equivalent to like a language parent. A language parent is is somebody that will um, try to understand, you know, what you're trying to say in a different language, and not necessarily correct you, but try to help you gain more understanding. And that's the one thing as an engineer, uh, you become more senior because you're learning more skills, you're learning different ways to solve problems. So really sitting. Um, with somebody that's more senior and talking about scenarios will really help you prepare uh, because you may not have experienced it personally but you can learn from their um, experiences and, and also their mistakes so that you won't fall into those pitfalls on your own so uh, one thing I do when I work with people that are very senior you may go hey, hey Elliot you've been there for a decade are there people more senior yes there are people that are super senior to me not only in age <laughs> but also in wisdom <laughs> and I just try to absorb that as much as possible so a lot of times what I do is I go and I say like, hey, here's a problem. Let me draw the problem. Like I'll draw like a, a, a diagram that has all of the major systems that's involved, the interactions between them, the data that's flowing between them. And then I say, hey, is, is that accurate? I step back and I ask myself if that's accurate. And then I give it a quick look and I say, yeah, that's accurate. And then I ask them, hey, is there anything else that you see that I may have missed? And we may see some things and it gets called out and then it gets pulled into, uh, you know, the diagram. And then uh, we kind of talk about, you know, trade-offs. And then I'll, at the end, I'll say like, hey, is there anything that you would do differently? How would you fix this? Or how would you solve this part? Or where are some contention issues? And so that actually helps me out a lot because I get perspective and I get, you know, a very pointed answer of, hey, this is something that we can solve. Like, we can solve this in three months. So that's, I would say hands down the best way is find somebody that's very very senior so 
Um, another thing that uh, was very helpful, because I work for a large co corporation, uh, we actually have professional training, and we bring in people, and uh, we bring in groups to help train us. And uh, it was a group uh, a couple years ago we uh, partnered with uh, named Tignum, and Tignum was amazing. Uh, they actually focused on sustainable high performance. Big, big thing in uh, sports, in uh, sports medicine and sports science. How do these a athletes uh, maintain year over year, you know, the ability to come out and perform at peak level? You look at like Muhammad Ali, you look at Pele, you know, these guys go out every like day and just are the best and, and, it, and it's, they're, they're just amazing. And so it's really like, how do we maintain that? Um, so uh, it's really this idea of like sports uh, people do it, like how can we bring that to a corporate setting? Um, so that was really what we got out of it, was really like how do we maintain this performance all the time of really highly achieving? Uh, one thing that was a very strong pillar was visualization and not just, you know, like uh, the idea of kind of being Tiger Woods and like you're you're hitting the golf ball and like you're, you're just playing golf in your mind all the time even though you're not physically playing golf. It's not only that, but it's really picture, picturing yourself in an interview and also trying to be prepared for whatever questions they're going to ask you. If you're working on UI, somebody will ask you something about a, a framework and actually prepare for, hey, somebody may ask this question and if they do, I'll answer this. Another thing you can do is just go on Stack Overflow and like find, hey, top interview questions for fill in the blank of the position. And then that will give you a good, you know, acumen of what will be covered. And then you can actually kind of prep your answers. Don't just regurgitate it. Really go and try to understand what they're saying. Understand the latest trends and why people are doing it that way. So I would say that's kind of two things. The third thing I would say is go to hackathons <laughs> because the best way to find opportunities or find uh, you know new skills uh, to learn, like new opportunities to learn, is through a hackathon. You know, it, it's the idea that you know you have a blank slate, you can work on something cool, you can try different things. You don't really have a lot of pressure there. I think that's something that uh, you should be uh, investing in because it really does help you, uh, you know, with you know learning a different skill set or really strengthening your your existing skill set because then you get to try it with different things. Uh, it's a uh, it's some studies there that uh, you know the best way to learn is by you know uh, slightly modifying. Uh, a process and uh, it's it's I, I, if I can find it I'll, I'll link it in the description so um, the one thing I would say with kind of you know my my kind of intro of the things you need to be aware of the things you should do um, also I should talk about when uh, don't start these activities when you're ready to go for an interview do it before <laughs> like do it years before months before weeks before not when you're going to go into an interview and you're like oh i'm gonna interview for a, a back-end position or like somebody wants me to be a scholar developer even though i'm writing it but i haven't really talked to anybody about it i haven't really practiced that much um you know that's the thing you should be doing early and often and really like kind of pull that back into you know do it start today these are things you should be doing today so uh, I would say if you don't have kind of a, a, a coach or a mentor, uh, get one. Uh, if you can't find one, please reach out to me. I can help personally, or I can connect you with somebody maybe in your area. You know, you are watching this on YouTube. Who knows where you're looking at it, uh, which is perfectly fine. Love that. Um, and I think those are some ways to prepare for technical interviews. So this has been another uh, video from the Ask Elliot series. Uh, if you violently disagree with what I'm saying, please drop a comment. Give me a video response. Call me out, please. <laughs> I love like interactions. I love feedback. Um, if this was helpful, please uh, click the like button. Also, uh, if you would like to subscribe to the channel, please. I would love that. Uh, I always answer very interesting and uh, crazy questions. And I also answer your questions. Uh, so I would say, you know, thank you for watching and I think that's it. Bye.